A few months ago, Hurricane Fiona ripped through Nova Scotia, causing considerable damage and the loss of electricity. Now, we were fortunate where I am, we didn't lose power for more than a few days. Others lost it for much, much longer. The experience got me thinking again about how I would receive emergency weather alerts. So as a result, I now have the Midland ER40 emergency weather radio, and I'd like to share it with you. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I would like to thank Midland for sending me the ER40 emergency alert radio so that I can share it with you. Now, in a moment, we're going to go down to the tabletop where I'll go over the key features for this unit as well as its physical and performance specifications and its modes of operation. But before we do, let's have a discussion about why you may want to consider owning a radio like this one. All right, let's just have a short discussion about why it's important that you have something like the Midland ER40 emergency alert radio. So to begin, the first question I had to answer for myself is, what will this radio do that my cell phone won't? Because, of course, I have weather applications on my cell phone that will give me emergency alerts should I need them. Well, the answer to that should be obvious. What if you're not in a cell phone coverage area? In addition, the ER40 is designed to be the smallest, more, most compact and lightweight unit in Midlands lineup, and it is intended for hiking and camping. And quite often, I'll go to areas that don't have cell phone coverage, but still, I have to be able to justify the weight and bulk that this radio has. So the way that Midland addresses that is by making it multifunctional. So in addition to being an AM, FM, and emergency weather alert radio, it does also have the flashlight, albeit not a powerful one, but still a flashlight that you can use and have handy when you need it. It is also a power bank that I can use to charge other devices with, and it can generate its own electricity through the small solar panel on top of it and the hand crank on the side of it. All right, let's just talk about the emergency alert channels and how that information is broadcast to you. So in the United States, it is NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, and in Canada, it is Weather Radio Canada. And they use seven dedicated frequencies to broadcast that information out. They have small broadcast locations across the continent and use those to send uh, frequencies and radio information over relatively short distances, approximately 50 miles, 60 miles out. And what that does is it ensures that you're getting information specific to your area and not something way outside of your geographic location. Now, they also have the ability to be even more defined, more specific in the broadcast using a specific area message encoding. So that really narrows it down to a small defined area. I should tell you that the ER40 does not have that technology. Now, for me, I don't mind that because we don't have the type of weather events that I would want that type of information before. So if you live in an area that is prone to tornadoes or sudden severe atmospheric events, then you may want to look for a radio that has the same technology. Again, it doesn't really apply to me. The information that I'll receive and the emergency alerts that this radio will give me are fine for the area that I live in. Now, let's just talk about finding those frequencies. So I cannot speak too greatly to how it's done in the United States, but I will tell you that if you go to the NOAA website, that you will have a map that will help you drill down to your specific location and give you the one of those seven frequencies that you want to tune into. Canada does exactly the same thing. There on the weather radio website, there was a map of Canada and I, can either type in my location or just go down through the map, enlarging the map and coming into my specific area and then hit on that. That will give me the frequency that I tune my radio into. And it works absolutely perfect. Now, on the other seven frequencies, I'm hearing absolutely nothing because I'm outside of their broadcast area. So that's the way that works. Just before we take a closer look at the Midland ER40 emergency alert radio, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So to begin, it did arrive in this box and inside the box was this manual of operating instructions and warranty information and a micro USB charging cable. 
All right, the other two things that came with this radio is this attached lanyard, which of course you can remove if you want to. And it came with an install 18650 battery. So this is a 2600 milliamp 18650 lithium ion battery, which is rechargeable and removable so that you can replace it if you wish. All right, let's go over the key features of this radio. So primarily, of course, this is a radio. It is an AM FM radio, but it does also have the emergency weather frequencies for NOAA and Weather Radio Canada. We'll talk more about those in a few minutes time. It is also a flashlight so there is an operating button up here and we'll talk about the flashlight in a few minutes time. It is also a power bank that can be used to recharge other devices. So it does have at this end the micro, if I can get it open with my fingernails, the micro USB charging port, it has the USB type A outgoing charge and up here you can see an earphone jack if you want to use that as well. Now as far as charging this radio goes, there are three ways in which it can be charged. Primarily of course it does have the included 18650 battery. But it does also have a small solar panel on top, which is useful for keeping the charge topped off on, of course, sunny days. It does have, in addition, a hand crank, which can be used to gener or recharge the battery. Although it is, doesn't add a lot of electricity, it does help to keep the battery charged up. And those two sources alone are great to have if you're in a grid down situation and you have no other way of keeping the radio charged up for its primary use. All right. Let's go through the physical specifications for this unit. So the weight of this with the battery installed is 11.4 ounces, which is 324 grams. The length is five and seven eighths inches, which is 15 centimeters. The width is three inches exactly, which is 8.8 .8 centimeters. And the thickness through is one and three quarters inches, which is 4.1 centimeters. As far as the performance specifications go for the Midland ER40 radio, there are a couple of things that I can tell you about it. One is that it is rated to be able to pick up broadcasts on the emergency weather alerts uh, stations for approximately 50 miles. And it's helpful depending on your situation if you use the included telescope antenna. Um, there's a few things that I can't tell you about it. One is whether it has a waterproof rating or an impact resistance rating. I cannot tell you what the lumen settings are for the flashlight and I can't tell you how long it will run on a full battery and of course that's partially dependent on how you're using it. If you're using it strictly as a radio it'll have a certain runtime. If you turn on the emergency alerts it will shorten the runtime. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes and of course if you're using and any other features such as the flashlight, it's going to have shortened the runtime as well. So operating the Midland ER40 radio is very simple and that is aided by the fact that it has got buttons across the front here very clearly distinguished for what their function is and that it's digitally operated. So over on this side is the on off button as well as the band select. To turn the radio on or off you have to press and hold the button for three seconds. That differentiates it from being able to go through the band so let's turn the radio on. And I'm going to turn the volume down, of course. But it does have an AM, FM radio, as well as the emergency frequencies. Let's make sure if I can get this on camera so I'm not blinding you with it. To operate or go through the bands, it's a quick press. And now I'm into the emergency alerts. But let me just run through the cycle. So AM, FM, and the emergency alert channels. Now, it does have... Uh, access to all seven of the emergency alert channels. We'll talk more about that in a moment and how they apply to you and how you determine which one is the emergency alert channel for you. Now, in addition, you can tune this radio on the AM, FM, or the emergency alert channel by using the up and down arrow buttons here. And as you already saw, I have the volume buttons or a plus and a negative here. And the last one over here is the turn on button for the emergency alerts, as well as a menu for all the other settings on the radio. Now operating the flashlight is very simple, on off button right here, and it just cycles on off and through the different uh, lumen settings. So there is a low, there is a high, 
and there is the SOS mode and then off again. So very simple. It has a reasonable beam cast, but it's not a, a flashlight you would use for navigating through the woods. This is more about what you having some light that you can use in a power failure nearby, maybe your bedside or in the kitchen or wherever you store this, or as this radio is ideally suited for, for camping or hiking with. So it's something that you can take with you and have just enough light for operating in your tent or around your campsite but again, not enough for going through the woods with. All right, when it comes to using the emergency alert radio uh, for its weather broadcast frequencies, first off, let's get to the band that has the frequencies. So there we are there. Now, you can see this one right now is at 165, 550. That is the band for my local area. I'll tell you more about how you can find out where your what your band would be. Now, if I just leave the radio on and I'll turn the volume just enough so you can hear and what you're listening to right now is a continuous weather broadcast from the Weather Canada website and this repeats through in English and then in French and then in back and forth so it does take some time to go through either language depending on what it is you're looking for in information I'll turn the volume back down again and there, turn it to move through each of the stations. You use these buttons I mentioned. Now, if you want to turn on the emergency alerts, then you do so by pressing this button. And what you will see, let's put it back to FM radio. And now I'll close in. You should be able to see a flashing WX icon there. And what that flashing WX icon is telling me is that the radio is ready to receive emergency alerts. So the way this works is you can leave it, the radio on, listening to the continuous weather broadcast if you want, or you can go back to listening to your favorite FM or AM channel, or you can leave the radio off as far as that goes. Let's just turn the radio off so you can see this. Holding the button down, turning it off, and the WX is still flashing. And what that means is that should there be an emergency alert issued by NOAA or Weather Radio Canada, then this uh, unit will flash up and start flashing its light and create a siren alert so that it draws your attention to tell you that is there is an emergency alert that you need to pay attention to. So the radio does not have to be on for in order for this to happen, but it does have to have that little WX flash up there and top. Without that, you're not going to receive the emergency alert. So again, you can use it with the radio on or the radio off and the emergency alert will come on as long as you have that little WX up there flashing. Now, one thing I will tell you in my testing is if you do have this set so the emergency alert can occur, then it will drain your battery faster than if you had it turned off. And that's understandable. It's like having something in standard my standby mode, it's still going to draw some electricity from the battery. Knowing that, what I have discovered is that I'll leave this somewhere where it can have access to the sunshine and uh, keep it topped up that way, or I may leave it plugged in with the micro USB cable into a power unit on the wall. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts on the Midland ER40 emergency alert radio. So the things I really like about it, of course, is the fact that for a radio of this type, it is still relatively compact and small and lightweight. Of course, it helps that it's very multifunctional in terms that there is a flashlight, there is an AM FM component as well as the emergency alerts, and that it can generate its own electricity and that it can be used as a power bank to charge other devices. The things that I would like to see improved is at least a information regarding the waterproof and impact resistance rating and maybe the lumen settings for the flashlight on the end of it. The other thing I mentioned again that this radio does not have is the same technology, the specific area message encoding, but that's not a deal breaker for me and maybe most people won't mind not having that as well. Really that information or that technology is most applicable to 
people who live in very high tornado or sudden atmospheric event prone areas. If you do, you may want to look for a radio of that type. And Midland does have radios with that technology. And I would recommend if you're interested that you go to the Midland website and check out their full range of radios because of course they have different radios for different applications and different sizes and different prices of course according to your budget and what it is you're looking for. So what I'll do is I'll put all the information I have given you in the video description below. I'll also provide the links where you can purchase this radio and if you have any questions or any comments on the Midland ER40 emergency alert radio put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.